I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to Lights, Camera, Ladies. This is the ninth event in the 2021 Chicago B Business Women's Network Leadership Summit Series. My name is Nima Freak. I'm class of 1998, and it is my pleasure to be your host. As many of you know, the Chicago Booth Women's Network hosts events around the world with the vision of women empowering women for professional success. And today we are here to en enhance our camera confidence. But before we get started, I want you all to know that here, as with all CBWN events, who you are, what you share is both valued and respected. We are here, we all here need to have the trust and confidence of free exchange of thoughts, ideas, feelings, embracing perspectives and views different than our own. And only then can we truly empower one another. And with that, I am pleased to introduce to you Michelle Moreno. With credits on hit shows like ABC's Boston Legal, NBC's Parenthood, and FX's The Shield, Michelle teaches secrets from the acting world so business leaders can build trust and connect powerfully on camera. She wants you to become so clear, present, and captivating you can build influence virtually anywhere in business. An honors Stanford grad, Michelle is contributing author on two business books by Guy Kawasaki and the newsletter on achieving excellence by Tom Peters. And she's appeared on 50 plus online events as a camera influence expert. She's also the only Latina Ray Charles backup singer in history. So I'm excited and I hope you are all Excited to get some tips and actions to take to be more camera ready. Over to you, Michelle. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Lights, camera, ladies. Hello, Chicago booth in the house. Thank you so much, Nima, for having me. I'm very excited to be here. And I am going to see if I can make this full screen. There we go. So why am I qualified to speak to you today? Ever since I was little, I dreamed about being on TV, but the only people with a hook nose like mine in Hollywood were Eric Estrada and the Wicked Witch of the West. But I moved to Hollywood anyway. And, you know, I was basically born and raised in Chicago uh, and finally got my first break when I moved out to LA on national TV on the game show Hollywood Squares. And the camera light went on and I freaked out in front of millions of television viewers, Whoopi Goldberg and Big Bird. Freak out, panic and fear. And when I went backstage after I lost miserably, everybody who was waiting their turn to go on the game show, they parted like the Red Sea because they didn't want to catch my loser disease. And then my uncle Julio called and he said, Dude, man, mijitas, I thought you were smarter than that, man. So <laughs> I ugly cried for like a year. And then I went back in to the mouth of the lion and I found mentors. And I said, I am not going to let one day in my life crush my dreams forever. So I took classes and I went on hundreds of auditions and little by little, I learned from every mistake. I took every ounce of feedback I could get, which is really hard to do in Hollywood. And four years later, I came back to national TV, but this time on hit shows, you may have heard of little parts, but they were parts on TV, speaking roles, shows like Boston Legal, Parenthood, The Shield. I was working with celebrities like William Shatner, Michael Chiklis. I went from freakouts to freedom on camera. And I literally created a presence that Hollywood could not ignore. Then I started working with business leaders, business leaders and teams at companies, uh, small business owners. And now uh, I'm helping people like you and a champion of women as well, uh, doing women's events um, to really learn how to look amazing and sound brilliant and tame your nerves on camera or use whatever arises in your body when high visibility meets high stakes. 
right? And you're on the camera and you've got both things happening at the same time. You're, you know, presenting to the board or trying to get your team to do an initiative or dealing with a challenging client or whatever the case may be. High visibility is on camera. So let's learn how to build trust and authority so you can crush it in business and get your gerbil the habit trail of his dreams. Why do we dislike the way we look on camera? Does anybody have any thoughts about that? Nima, does, put it in the chat. Does, um, why do we dislike the way we look? This is an open-ended question. Put it in the chat. Some of you may even be experts in this. I know, Nima, you said you worked on a campaign where you actually polled women about the way they thought they looked. And the women gave themselves an average of, of a seven and the men were like all rated themselves a nine or ten in their beauty. <laughs> yeah, I think we're we're just hard on ourselves, right? And we're this is what we're hearing. We're our own worst critics. We don't always look at ourselves, and we don't come across as confident or capable. And you know what? We also are competing with digitally enhanced images from supermodels, so we have this bizarre sense of beauty in this culture. Um, really impossible beauty standards. I mean, who wakes up looking like that? Nobody, right? Um, you know, on TV, you think these actors really, I mean, come on, they don't come onto set looking gorgeous. So then we're also used to seeing ourselves in the mirror and we are just critics, right? So the solution is just one way is to just learn to look amazing on camera. And here's how. You want to make sure that your face is well lit. Study after study shows that human beings connect emotionally to other human faces, babies, and baby animals, okay? So your face is the thing that is going to draw people in. You know, on an evolutionary level, we have been trained, it's in our DNA to recognize faces for better cooperation and to survive as a species. So your face should really be taking up at least 50%, 50% of that frame. And you wanna make sure people can see it and that it's well lit. So natural light is the most flattering, but if you can't, uh, and you can put on a little more makeup than usual, maybe some lipstick. Uh, if you don't wear makeup, um, just even just a little bit of lipstick and blush will really bring out your features. But you can also just, if you don't have a natural light coming in through a window, just use, the, use a desk lamp that has a dimmer. Or um, I also have some recommendations for lights. If you look at that link, kit.co slash Michelle Moreno, there's a section in there called lights. If you go to kit.co slash Michelle Moreno, I have a couple of lights that I recommend, um, but also raise the camera to eye level. You don't want the lens of the camera down here because then people are looking up. You could, they can see up your nostrils, the double chin action happens. You really want that camera to be at eye level, even a little bit above uh, and then tilt the camera down if the camera lens is higher than eye level. And then you wanna take the um, cloth that comes with your eyeglasses and you always wanna wipe the lens, right? Because what if there's smudges, especially if you're using your smartphone to shoot a video? Again, 50% of that frame should be taken up by your face. If, if you get really close on some cameras and you have large features, they, they can start to distort. So just sit back far enough that that doesn't happen and avoid the newbie gap. The newbie gap is when there's a ton of space between the top of your head and the top of the frame. Now, if there's something important in the background that you need to show, like you're the author of a book and you have it on a stand or you're showing information like a Prezi presentation or something or a whiteboard, fine. But if there's nothing of importance back there, then just close the gap just a tiny little space between the top of your head and the top of your frame. And of course, clean up your background because your background is your brand. Let's talk about some wardrobe do's and don'ts. You always want to wear tones that flatter your skin. Nima and I are very attuned to our skin color. We both look good in this color, right? And so if you're not sure what colors work with your skin, then just go into your closet, look in a mirror, or even better, set up your camera and then just put the clothes, look in the camera and put the clothes under your neck one at a time. And you will see that there are certain colors that make your skin more beautiful, that flatter your skin tone. 
if you wear a color that washes you out, you look like this. You also want to wear form fitting clothes. And the reason is, is that people's eyes, wherever you cut off in the frame is they can, they imagine that this line continues. So if you cut off extremely wide, then they will just imagine that the rest of you is that wide. Do you see the difference? So your eye will just fill it in. So that's why you want to wear form fitting clothing, especially where you cut off in the frame. And uh, bright solids are, are really good. If you wear a hound's tooth or a very tight pattern, it can strobe or vibrate on camera. So make sure you test those out um, on camera. Um, if you can see his shirt is strobing, whereas her pattern is not. Her pattern is wide enough not to strobe, but hound's tooth uh, tends to strobe. So just take a look at that before you go on camera or test it out on your camera. So can anyone answer the question why we dislike the way we sound? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Nima, has, does anyone have a guess? Not yet, but right. I think it's coming. <laughs> we don't anyone? hear our voice as others do. Anyone? Here. Anyone? <laughs> so yes. Yes, can you hear me? I can. Okay, so it's... Uh, we don't hear a voice as others do. You sound different from how you sound in your head. Ding, ding, and you ding, hear ding, your ding. own voice differently than others. Um, or you're too forceful or you're too light or you hear the um. So ding, you ding, start ding. to get very critical. Ding, ding. Absolutely correct. We are used to hearing our voice as a sound that is traveling away from us. And it sounds very different when we're listening from inside our own head versus our voice recorded somewhere coming toward us. It sounds completely different. So you do have a, not only that issue, but of course the inner critic is gonna come out too. So the solution is just to sound brilliant with warmups. So when you have a lot of speaking to do, tension here can create a restriction in your voice. And we just want to be relaxed when we speak because being relaxed in this area allows the air and the resonance to flow in our voice. And it also gives us a more authoritative, confident sound. So before you go on camera or have a high stakes uh, speaking situation, just do some physical warm up. Those of you, some of you may remember Prancer size where she hops around like a horse, but you know, you do what you want, whatever physical warm up works for you, you know, whether it's yoga or push ups or jumping jacks or dancing around the room to your favorite song that that can really give you the right energy, right? To have that you want to come in with enthusiasm. So you want to also ensure that your neck and shoulders are relaxed. So let's do the shoulder scrunch. Okay. The shoulder scrunch is going to be, I'm just going to go crazy and take off my jacket. We are going to do this together. I want everybody to breathe in. As you breathe in, scrunch up your shoulders, scrunch them up. Thank you, Susan. I see you doing it. Uh, and then, relax. Okay. Breathe in. <sighs> you just want to make sure this area is nice and relaxed. If you're going to hold your tension, hold it elsewhere. Now we're going to learn a warm up. The first one is the siren. A lot of professionals use this and you just want to breathe in. And then you're going to breathe out like as if you're sighing, but you're going to start high and go low as follows. Breathe in. <sighs> And you're just sighing and letting this be relaxed and going down. So breathe in. <sighs> Thank you, Susan Nima. I can see you doing it. Your stars. And the raspberry. Love this one. Everybody can do it. Babies do it all the time. You breathe in. Okay, but don't spit on your equipment. So turn your head away from the computer and breathe in. Okay, so that's just simple stuff that will warm you up and just always sit or stand with a tall spine, jaw, neck, relaxed. So are you ready to hear a secret about fear? To fear is to be human. It unites us all. It's universal. And our fears can actually offer insight because it leads us to our greatest desires. The more nervous you are in a high stakes situation, 
Sometimes it's nerves because you're afraid you'll be judged, but sometimes it's just an indication that you care, that it matters to you. But when it comes to being visible, there could be a prehistoric memory that actually causes your body to want to shrink, hide, and run. It's a little known secret about why we really fear the camera. It goes back to our pack animal days. When you, we traveled as pack animals way back in the day, if you got separated from the group, you could actually starve to death or be eaten by a predator. Fast forward to today. If you're public speaking or going on camera, when you are pulled away from the group, you feel like the little baby gazelle who's just there behind the group ready to be eaten by the saber-toothed tiger. And then your body instinct is to shrink and hide and you go into fight or flight mode. That's why when you get up in front of the group, <laughs> your, your heart starts to pitter patter. You go into literally fight or flight. And that's what happened to me on the game show, Hollywood Squares. I literally thought I was going to die and my body just actually started to leave. Not good. So no bueno, right? Today, we, we really fear that cyber tooth tiger, right? Those trolls are going to come and talk about us and say that we're ugly. Okay, this is literally the stuff that's going through our mind. So uh, we have a poll that we'd like you to answer. Poll, Denise, about, can, can we put that up? When you are in front of the camera and you're about to speak, what thoughts arise? Can you answer this poll question, please? I can't wait to hear the answer. I can't wait to see the results. This is exciting. I've never done one of these polls in here, so I'm excited. What's the answer? Do we get to We've see him right now? We've got 27 of 38, oh, 30 of 38 people almost. So we'll give it maybe five more seconds for people. Okay. Okay, people, get in your answers. Five, four, <laughs> three. What if it's all of the above? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm I'm <laughs> try to pick the one that's the strongest. <laughs> Two, one. Okay, let's get our answers. Nine percent. I got this. It's tough out there. I look terrible. Do I have anything value to say? Ooh, and they'll find out I'm an imposter. What if I forget? That got the highest. Wow. And 0%. Huh. I, I'm so fascinated by that. I, you'll save those results for me, right? Because I'm just fascinated by that. Yep, you never absolutely. know what you're going to get. Okay. So, of course, when you try something new, you're going to have a confidence crisis. But on camera, you think things like, oh, I look like a troll. I'm going to sound like an idiot. Do I have anything to say that's of value? Uh, people will find out I'm a poster. I'm going to have to add what if I forget to this um, slide. And we also fear judgment from girls like these, let's face it. And in high school, I have to admit, I wasn't even that nice. I'm, I mean, I'm a little nicer now. <laughs> so I just feel like it's tough out there, right? And we get nervous. So why don't we just do like Olympians? If you ask an Olympian before a big race, how you feel? They never say I'm nervous, never. They will transform whatever rises in their body to their advantage. They will use the adrenaline that's pumping in their body to be better in the race or the competition. Why? Because they've been coached at such an elite level by all the top coaches of the world who all know how to tell them how to do this. So nerves, as I said, indicate you care. And in this TED Talk, Kelly McGonigal, who did a TED talk called How to Make Stress Your Friend, shows us the research she did. She did literal research with control groups and <coughs> taught another group that stress was helpful. And if you view stress as helpful, it helps you. Your pounding heart, your shaky hands will give you more no, energy and brain power. Don't worry about it. Um, we'll make two servings. We'll okay, do two servings. Two servings it is. <laughs> two servings of of confidence. 
<laughs> that's okay. No worries. Um, so the pounding heart and the shaking hands will give you more energy and brain power if you channel it. So is everybody ready to channel and learn how to be confident? Everybody ready? All right. This is what you do. You breathe in, you breathe out, and you roll your shoulders back, okay? And you assume wide body language. Why? It gives you the appearance of being more confident and also the inner chemistry of confidence. And then you're going to use that extra er nervous energy to speak more loudly, more clearly, and to use the blood that's pumping to your brain to remember your talking points. And you will literally use that extra energy in this way. If you have a lot of shakiness, then hold the tension in your shoulder blades by squeezing your shoulder blades. Remember, this is going to be, or, or perhaps um, uh, finding the tense point somewhere else that you can squeeze in your body. Um, but this is the posture that you'll assume. And then if you really want to generate some warmth right before you go on, you hold a smile for a full minute. Got it? And now we're going to build authority with emotional connection. In order to be liked and trusted, bottom line, you've got to get people. Oh, okay. Put it this way. We're learning to build like and trust, right, with, on camera with this talk. But we need to inspire people to take action in the business world. In the business world, it's about getting people to take the next step. It's one thing to give a speech and then everybody goes home and nobody does anything. But you want to get the desired effect, the desired action. And what motivates an action? Does anybody know what motivates an action? What, in, what moves people to take an action? It's when they are emotionally invested or connected or they get a feeling from you. That's what motivates action. And remember I said before, we all human beings respond to humans, babies and baby animals. So unless you have a baby panda in your budget, you are the baby panda. You are the baby panda. I'm your brand. It doesn't matter if you're working at a company right now that you hate and that you're trying to leave. It doesn't matter if you're leaving this job in two weeks. When you go on camera, that is part of your personal brand. And your personal brand follows you wherever you go. And it is a really good idea, whether you're in business or working at a company, to develop that personal brand and become responsible for being that leader who shows up with the right energy and creating the emotional response that you need for people to take action with you because people are used to getting their emotions from screens. So your biggest competitors are not Suzy Q in your space or at your company, it's kittens and the tiger king. That's your competition. So the biggest mistake I see people make is that they don't connect to their eyes to the lens. They watch themselves on the selfie video the whole time. Now, it's perfectly natural, and, and you don't want to stare at the lens like this the whole time because that would be weird. So you can just replicate a regular natural conversation. But if you watch yourself the entire time and never connect your eyes to the lens and you're just like this the entire presentation – it's going to cause people to tune out and go watch cats on a Roomba. Have you ever seen a cat on a Roomba? I highly suggest that you indulge. Just do a search. And at key points, you know, you really want to connect your eyes to the lens, especially if it's something important. So in order to get the right energy with a camera that's there, what if there's nobody there, right? And you have to shoot a video or a presentation. Imagine somebody who inspires you is right inside that lens. Or if you're in a meeting, and you're nervous, then just talk to, put the person who is the best person in the room for you, the one who's really going to champion what you have to say, the one who you know has got your back. Imagine they're right inside that lens, inside, on the other side, whatever makes sense to you. Locate where your lens is. Some people, when they put their smartphone on, the lens is so tiny, they don't even know where it is. And use a post-it to mark it if that's the case. Put a post-it with a smiley so you know, oh, hey, I got a smile and, and that's the person I'm really talking to. Use a photo of your ideal client or your favorite team member or that board member who has your back. Take a picture of them 
cut a hole out where their nose would be and just put it right over the lens and ask yourself, how do I want to make this person feel? I want to comfort this person or reassure them or heal them or warn them. There's been a cyber attack, you know, whatever the case may be, bring that right intention. If you're in sales, it's often enthusiasm for your product, a passion for what you do. Um, But in some cases, it might be that you have a lot of uh, anxious clients who are freaked out because let's say you do work in cyber attacks and they're freaking out because their company is being attacked and it's their job on the line, then your job would be in that conversation to convince them you're the solution by taking them from an anxious place to feeling empowered. And if you know that you're doing that, you're doing what actors do. We're choosing our intention. And for you, if you know emotionally what you're doing, you're going to be way ahead of your competition. So today you learn how to stop hiding from the cyber tooth and, um, you also, and why you're scared of the cyber tooth, and also how to appear confident so that the cyber trolls don't attack. And you know what? If people attack, who cares? They're not going to be your peeps. You're always going to attract some and repel others. That's what the best marketing does, right, Nima? The best marketing is going to pull in the right people and it's going to just repel the others. Why? Because you're taking a stand. And, you know, you got to be judged, you've got to be visible for the right people to trust you and follow you. So if you want to become that leader, if you want to move up in the ranks, and this is Chicago Boo, so we're not, we're not here just to say good day. We're here to slay, right? Susan's like, yeah, I'm here to slay. <laughs> Susan Hudson, you're one of the only people I can see other than the Nima. So 1996, so young. I'm like, I'm 91 Stanford undergrad, never went to grad school. Um, Today's business trust is built online. So, you know, you learn to look amazing and sound confident. And um, if you really want to scale your reach and impact and build trust as your expert best, boo, do I have something nice for you? You're going to get a complimentary Zoom with me where you're going to show me three minutes of a video and I'll, I'll tell you ways to improve and I will reveal your camera superpower because we all do something good. Everybody. I mean, everybody's got a superpower. Um, By doing so and giving me your email, you'll be put on my uh, weekly list. I usually send out a couple times a month, sometimes every week, but usually it's a couple times a month, uh, which you can unsub from anytime. Put your email in the chat if you'd like that or email me at mmmshellmoreno.co, but putting your email in the chat would be the best way. And finally, I have one thing that I want to do for you before we go, and that is give you a little inspiration on how to tame your inner critic. If your inner critic is still, you look terrible. You sound like a mess. You look terrible. Oh, what are you going to say? You're going to forget everything. You're going to forget everything, right? If you have this voice that's talking to you, then you say, thank you, inner critic. Thank you for being here. I know you're just trying to keep me safe from the cyber trolls. That's right. I know. I know you're a part of me and I love you for trying to keep me safe from the bad world. But right now you need to go in the back seat because you're going to distract me from the needs of the person on the other side of the lens that I need to talk to. You need me. No, I don't. And you put her in the back seat for the duration of that shoot. Tame your inner critic for the day. Love her and then send her on her way. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. It's time to make a video. Put your inner critic in the back seat behind plexiglass so she can't make a peep. She can come along for the ride, but she can't drive. And you cannot listen to her. She can come out when the shoot is over because there's a time when you're near by your side and that's the time to watch the replay because she's a master. She'll tell you faster how to improve. Just ask her. She might drive you cray cray, but that's okay, Kay, because when you tame her, you'll have a hella big digital day day. Okay, tame your inner critic for the day. Love her and send her on her way. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you very much. I'm Michelle Moreno. Go forth with camera influence. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was really fun. And actually some great tips. 
things that I could actually see myself doing. So that makes you crazy. I love it. Um, so do we have any questions? If you want to put them in the chat, I can um, say them out loud and share them in this way. Um, you have a, we have about 20 more minutes with Michelle. Oh, so wow. any questions? Yeah, you were. Did I fly through that? Did I get 30 minutes? You did. You were, you were on it. And some compliments. Thank you, Michelle. That was great. It's always nice. Any questions, as crazy as they want to be, go for it. Oh my gosh, you're right. so right. A lot of people take took me up on that offer. Yeah. Because Nemo was like, a lot of people are going to take you up. I was like, no, they won't. And she was like, yes, they will. And I'm like, no, they won't. <laughs> and she was right. <laughs> she knows her people. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So we have some questions. You ready? Given challenges with uh, work from home, I'm curious how unprofessional it is to have a bed in the background on a call. That's a good question. I personally, this is my opinion. It depends. But personally, I think that is unprofessional. Me. But that's because I'm very conscious of my personal brand. And your personal brand really, you carry it with you your entire life. And it's important enough that you just get a buy on Amazon, a paper background with a, um, use a virtual background. If your hair is smooth, I can't use a virtual background because my hair is curly. So if it was me, uh, the curls kind of look weird on the virtual background. So I would just probably buy one of those backdrops that will just like a gray one or a plain one and hide the bed, but that's me. Okay. But the reason is, is that if, if we're trying to move up in the world, we need to be seen as highly professional, prepared and detail oriented. And so it's not a big deal to just pop on a virtual background if you have smooth hair, right? How hard is that to throw on? Not gonna be that hard. So I would say in the event that that, that were the case, do the virtual background. So that actually answers the next question. Which I have a curious, I'm curious background. what other people think. Does anybody else have, I mean, Nima, what do you think of that? Um, I think for professional appearances, uh, the bed is probably not the best place to be. Um, I didn't know this before, but apparently, I don't know if it's a, a federal law or if it's a state law or just our school, but I did see that um, a lot of the schools, in fact, were saying that kids were not allowed to be in, in their bedroom or show their bed while they were on camera which I thought was fascinating because I would never have thought that with all the virtual schooling going on. You, you were not allowed to have the child show the, the bed in the background. So there's obviously okay. something to it. <laughs> there's something to that. So I would say use a virtual background or buy one and set it up to block the bed behind you. And I do think it's fascinating what you said about the virtual background with the straight hair versus the curly, because I never thought about that before, but you're right. If my hair is a little bit wonky or out of control it does it seems like it it messes up the virtual background a little bit more so thank you for that as well um so there's also a uh someone else is also curious about a giant plant behind me and how it is perceived so okay. if you actually have it behind you let me see what look. this is how do i how do i see that so scroll it's down it's bigger. oh Maybe talking helps uh bring me forward and my lighting is bad because it's morning light coming in. How come I don't see this person? Oh, Demetra. Lisa no, Baker. No, no, no. It's, it's Lisa Baker. So you can scroll down where you have everyone. Oh, ah, there you are. Um, can I pin her or can somebody pin her? Denise, Lisa, can I, can you pin Lisa so I can see what's going on? Cause right now she's just like tiny. Is, uh, there she is. Okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Just curious on your take on this. And I know my lighting's pretty bad because morning light, but um, okay. Cool, big you plant. Love the, to... love the cool, big plant. What I don't like is you have a kind of a big newbie gap happening. Mm. 
So can you, there you go, even more. Better? Mm-hmm. Better? <laughs> I would say more. And are you a hands talker, Lisa? Do you talk with your hands? Uh, not a lot. Okay, if you don't, then that's fine. Um, I would say even more or raise yourself up a little higher. Do you have a? I'm at the good, but I can keep going down. But that, I'm feeling that. Now just put a little bit of space, just a little bit of space between. There you go. Y'all see how much better that looks? And do you want to know why? Because this is what we're concerned about. We need to see this because this is what human beings are going to connect to. So you do need more light on your face. Definitely. Love the plant. <laughs> Um, okay. Good. Thank uh, you. you can move the plant over a little bit toward the yellow shelf. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. But I love it. Great. And as long as you get light on your face, then the light behind you won't be as just distracting because then I'll, your face will be more even with that light. Right now you're fighting with the light that's in the window, yeah. uh, we, but we mainly need to see this. And yeah. you, and if you light your face, then the light there won't be as much of a fight. And I like the fact that I can see those plants because mm-hmm. then it shows your humanity. Cool. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So there's a question uh, along the lines of background. If you mm-hmm. were going to buy one, what should you look for in a background? Uh, to buy an in-camera one? Um, I would say or just- Even if you were doing a virtual background, so what should you select? Because there's so many different options out there. Of the virtual background, um, it, it, are you this person? Or do you work for a company, or do you work as an, a solopreneur, or you have your own company? It depends. If you're working for a company, then go ahead and use the colors or the background that's sanctioned by the company. And some companies will even say, let's everybody just use this light blue one so that we don't have to even look at the backgrounds, you know, because we're all on Zoom. So we just less is more, you know what I mean? We're also just tired and Zoom fatigued out and the less we have to look at the better. So it's just something plain and something that matches the brand of your company, that something that's contrasting with you. So you don't want the same, I don't want the same blue as my shirt, as my background. So make sure it's a color that's different from my, from this. As long as the color is different from this, like a kind of a plain gray color or a plain different than this, we're in good shape. So I would say something plain, something that's on brand, something that is matches your company colors or matches your company, your company that you work at or your own brand. Um, and nothing too crazy that's going to distract from this. So what do you think about those backgrounds? I feel like everyone's picking these beautifully uh, uh, designed backgrounds almost comes out of architectural digest and they just they put it back there and you you kind of think you're looking into someone's living room it turns out there as we saw of one of our panelists or one of our other um, events they were actually sitting in their closet you know but they she just had this beautiful background it looked like she had this wonderfully lit and decorated living room in the background so do you go with the the perfect looking like you're in your home but it looks totally perfect or do you go with something like the bookshelf that was a big thing for a while especially on CNN when they were starting to do a lot of the the bookcases in the background and they were decorated (laughs) a certain way what do you think I mean I'm a big fan of less is more I think it's fun to experiment and if you have the kind of company culture or if it's your company those backgrounds are better than if the person is in their closet like if, if they're in their closet, really go ahead and choose the crazy background that looks like you're in this crazy place. If it's obvious, like with me and my curly hair and you can see the green and it's, if it's super obvious, then you're not there, that you're not in a beautiful place, then choose something that's a little bit less of a lie because on camera, you want people to trust you. And so the truth matters. And if you are true, true telling, truth telling, on camera, then people will trust you more. So if it's obvious because my hair is doing this and you see green all around my head, that I'm not where I say I am, that's going to kind of make me feel a little strange subconsciously. But if it's super, looks like you're there and nobody can tell, go for it, have fun. And it kind of depends, but less is more these days. 
less is more. We're, we're, we're exhausted and any, any pressure that you can relieve, any stress that you can le relieve from somebody by having something really plain and zen is going to make a difference. Now for me, I'm presenting. So I have this mic because my sound will be so much better. So I'm sacrificing the look for the sake of the sound in this case, but that's because I'm the speaker. So it just depends. And along with sound, um, what are your thoughts on whether or not someone should get a separate mic or if they should just, if they are speaking, if they should get a separate mic or just use the one in their computers? Oh, the separate mic. Get a USB mic at the bare minimum if you are going to be speaking a lot or if you want to sound more professional. Um, and the reason is just relying on this, the microphone that comes with your laptop. It's not great, but if you're just attending a meeting, that's fine. If you're leading the meeting, if you want to become a leader in your organization, if you want to have more influence, then it behooves you to spend the, um, well, if you go to that kit.co slash Michelle Moreno, I also have some audio. I think the one, the USB mic I had was like, I don't know, 99 bucks. I chose the Blue Yeti, but you know, there's a few out there that are less. It behooves you to get the separate USB mic. What about a separate camera? Or should you just use the one that's in your computer? I'm not even sure if you can do a separate camera. I didn't know that. That was an option. Um, yeah, again, same things apply. You want to not stick, you want, you want to be better than your competitors. You want to be rising in your organization. You want to stand out as a solopreneur or a owner of your company. If you are at that level and rising, and I'm assuming the, the women in here are right. I mean, they're, they're, these are ambitious women. This is not, this is not the, Oh, I'm just happy where I'm at crowd. Is it? <laughs> or is this, is this a, okay, let's put in the chat. Is this like, what kind of crowd is this? A scale from one to 10, where, where you, are you moving up? Like, or can, can you tell me, Nima? What's the crowd always here? Always moving and shaking. We're boofies. We're always moving and shaking. Okay, these are movers <laughs> and shakers. From Lisa's, from scale to one to 10, she's a nine on how much she wants to move and shake. So if you are a nine on a scale of one to 10 and you want to move up, you want to be the chief, you want to be the top, you want to be the nine, what do you think the answer is? Do you think... Just keep the crap mic and camera, or do you want to move on up and be better? Or at least as good as the rest of the leaders? Go ahead, upgrade, get the USB, get the Logitech Pro C922 and put it, plug it into the USB slot on your, cam on your my, uh, computer. Get the Logitech Pro, do it, upgrade. Get a USB mic. The Blue Yeti is a fine solution. There's others out there. Um, and I, like I said, I put those recommendations in the kit.co slash Michelle Moreno. Um, some of the equipment that I've used and that's proven to be well. This setup is even more professional. This, I mean, but that this is going to be beyond most people here. But if some of you have some technical uh, experience, then the what setup I'm using is I'm using an actual real mic that I use for recording audio. It's like a really dealio and it's going into a preamp and then going into an interface that is going into my computer. But that's, that's if you really want to do like sort of a higher end scenario, but if not, just get a good USB mic and get an external webcam. The answer is yes. Okay. And then this question, I'm going to combine the two together. One is about, uh, you know, COVID happened. So many of us, like myself, have put on a couple of pounds. And so feeling a little more self-conscious on camera, what can we do to, to minimize that? And along with that, how much of our bodies should be shown on camera? What can you do to minimize? It sounds, okay, so one of the techniques that I teach, um, I have a program called the Video Confidence Academy, and then I also go into corporations um, and teach teams as well as individuals. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for corporations as well and group coaching for corporations. And one of the techniques I teach is to strengthen the needs of the person on the other side of the lens so that it's not about you. Taking the focus off of yourself 
do all the things that I mentioned in this talk about making yourself look better, but at some point and to do the tame your inner critic, this is, this is recorded, right? This is recorded Nima, so they can watch it again. So watch to tame your inner critic, put her in the back seat for the duration of the virtual presentation. But if, if it's still not working, strengthen the needs of the other person. What is the need, the exact situation that this person is desperate for that you're about to give in this video? If you strengthen the needs of the other person, then suddenly you are in service and it's not about you anymore. And you stop thinking as much about yourself and you start thinking more about the needs of the other person. So imagine they're desperate for what you're about to say. What was the, what was the context of the question? What would be the exact situation? Uh, it combined two questions. So one where someone was concerned about the weight they put on during COVID. Um, and how to minimize that. And I think you spoke to a little bit of that too, like, you know, sitting taller, the form fitting clothes. I thought was a very interesting tidbit on that. You're right. Like, you know, just the wider you are here, the wider yeah. they See how she looks like she's going be. wider? Yeah. As soon as she did that, like if, I, if I'm just talking like this the whole time, doesn't it kind of look like I have a big chest? But I don't, I'm, I have like a little chest. <laughs> And so it, yes, form fitting, raise the camera lens so that it's higher than you are and then tilt it down. Because if you, if you do the talk from here and you know, you're, you're above the lens, then what happens is this like starts to show up more. So just make sure that camera lens is at eye level or even above, and then you tilt it down to meet you. And then how much of your body? So like if I go out, I go in, like where should we be? If, your hand, if you're a hands talker, <laughs> if you talk with mm -hmm. your hands, studies show that hand gestures do enhance the communication experience. So you do not want to be, if you're a hands talker and you're like this and you're talking with your hands then it's going to be really weird for the people. So if you're a hands talker, then back it up a little and show your hands. So like if I'm doing a presentation and I'm all, you know, don't over gesticulate and try to keep the, the gestures within the power box. Because if you do too much or if you do the same, if you do the same gesture the entire time, like Bernie, that's why he lost. Because he constantly uses that one gesture and it gets annoying and it's kind of aggressive and pointy, right? So what you want to do is you want to keep your gestures sort of here, but you definitely want to show them because then people can get a little bit more information from you. If you're not really a hands talker, you can show, I would, I like um, showing a little bit more of the body only because little by little, we're going to be ending up on camera as the future happens into the future. Let's look into the future. The future is going to be us walking around like we're in a room right? We all know that this is where this is going. Eventually, someday, we're going to be like little avatars in a virtual world. I know that's really scary to think about, but that's what's going to happen. So little by little, you've got to get used to showing more of yourself on camera. So sh showing a little bit more is good, like this. I just keep pulling it in and out to see the difference, but it is interesting. I kind of like okay, showing I more. What do you all think? Put in the chat. Do you like less? Do you like headshot, like shoulders and up? Or do you like uh, from the kind of waist up? I'm curious. What does the chat say? What do people like? What do you all think? Sometimes it gets weird Sometimes. with the chest. Yeah, it depends, right? I think if, you know, as a woman, if it looks you know, I think your body makes people look small. If you go with my initial, my initial recommendation was make your face 50% of the height of the frame. So this is 50% and this is 50%. You can never go wrong with us with a kind of a close up on the face. But if it's like, you're so bored and you just want to try something new, you're with the same people all the time. Okay. But if you're presenting like I was, go ahead and keep that rule of 50% of the frame should be your face, of the height of the frame, this way. 
Okay, so some of the comments back was depending on where I'm zooming from. <laughs> I right. see either the headshot only or a larger screen where I'm able to hand talk as well. Um, right. And then someone else had an interesting comment that it does make you look smaller if you're further back versus perhaps if you're if you're you don't like want to go said, so fifty percent. You don't want to go so far back that you look small, right? Because this is what people need to see. So if you're going to sacrifice a little bit of hand gesture, the better thing to do is to be the human face that connects. Again, though, if you, if you need to mix it up because it's just you're you're just feeling it, go ahead and make it make a little adjustment. But interesting, so close is more powerful. Okay, so your perception of me, let's say, if I'm talking, is more powerful if my face is 50-50, 50% of the height. If I'm back here and I'm talking, it's just, it's just going to feel a little strange. So I say close is better in the end. That makes sense. Any other questions? This is really fun. Thank you, Michelle. But let's see if there's any more questions. We have probably enough for two more questions. All right. How do we balance the need to read from a presentation or notes with trying to look right into the camera and speak? That's a good one. Yeah. So it it try to get your notes as close as you possibly can to the lens. Uh, always speak in your area of expertise so that you can use minimal amounts of notes um, and you don't have to read. Now, you see these subject matter experts when they go on the news, if they're obviously reading, you can totally see it. So try to be the type of speaker that can speak with just an, you know, a title, an intriguing title and like three bullet points or slides like in a presentation. Try to become that speaker. Don't rely uh, too much on a reading like a teleprompter in, in presentations or things like that because it shows. You can see it on the, on the news and things like that. If you have to, you have to. If, you, if, you, if you're shoved in a situation where you just have to read from the teleprompter because you've literally been given three minutes to prepare and they're like, go now, you have to go on television or whatever, then you have to do it. And there's ways to do that well. But in general, if you're speaking about business and, and you're the leader, get used to coming up with your intriguing title, which is your executive summary. So, so give me a topic, for example, and I'll just demonstrate. Give me a topic. All right, someone put something in the chat. Somebody throw me a, any topic that you want me to talk about. It doesn't have to be in my area of expertise. Look, this is improv. This will be fun. Okay, right, travel. travel. Okay, so... Um, why Budapest, my opening hook would be, why Budapest is one of the most interesting places to travel. One, they have some of the best world-class restaurants, including three Michelin stars. Two, um, it's absolutely stunning architecture, the best of Europe. And three, the transportation. They are one of the first people to come up with a beautiful train line back in the early 1900s, uh, one of the first to create a metro. So their, their travel and their trains are absolutely beautiful and world-class. So that's why Budapest is such a great place to travel. So I didn't even know anything about travel, although I have been to Budapest and lived there. So that's why I was able to say that. But you know your shizzle, right? You know your shizzle. So you will put your intriguing title at the top which answers the question for the people listening, why should I listen to this? Why? Because you're going to learn why Budapest is so cool. So anybody who's ever considered that city will suddenly go, oh, and the people who will never travel to Budapest will go watch cat videos. So you have to ha know your audience and you have to come up with an intriguing title that will tell those people, why should I stay and watch this? It's the opening hook. And then you have your one to three supporting points and your conclusion. And that is how you can speak clearly without a teleprompter in your area of expertise. Make sense? Okay. So one more about a monitor, one more about Mike. Um, with the monitor, 
what if you had a dual monitor? You know, sometimes you see people looking to the left a little bit versus down. Like what's, what's better to look down or to look to the left? The best thing is to put your notes as close to the lens as possible. And I would choose underneath the lens as opposed to the side, because this is why. If you are putting your notes over here, then you actually have to turn, well, if you can just turn your eyeballs and see it, then it might be okay because actually I changed my mind. There's two ways to do it. If it's to the side, then you want to look like you're thinking. So let's say I'm talking and I have to get my next bullet point. I just may sit there and talk like this for the next one, but it looks like I'm really thinking about your answer, but really, really what I'm doing is I'm getting the notes. And so I see, okay, chocolate. Okay. So then chocolate is the next point I have to make. So you can put it off to the side and then just every single time you go to get it, it's like you're thinking, right? And then you reconnect your eyes to the lens. Better thing to do is to not move your head is to just move your eyes. So get that used to keeping your head there, but getting the next bullet point and then reconnecting your eyes to the lens without moving your head. So the entire presentation, you would be doing this. No, 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 you wanna just get grab it and then keep talking. Same with the below. I would go with below and get, get, the, get the notes as close. I would literally raise my, my computer on a box so that the notes are right underneath the lens. That way, all I have to do is just, you know, I'm talking, blah, 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 blah. I'm grabbing the next bullet and then I connect my eyes to the lens. And then I'm going down here and I keep talking and this is set up the, the mic. Uh, what if we have sound monitor by the side and we have to share the screen to present? Well, that's gonna make a balance of looking at the presentation. You see how that's done? So as close to the lens as, as possible. Okay, and our last question is about mics. A good way, what's a good way to test them other than objectively, other than literally having another friend on Zoom going back and forth with you? Is there a better way to test different mics? Back in the day, when I was buying vocal mics, I used to be able to go to like Guitar Center and then they had a bunch of mics and you could test them. I don't know if there's that store that exists today because everybody's buying everything on Amazon. So other than objectively testing on a Zoom and asking how you sound, I don't know that there's a way. That is the way that I would do it, is buying it, plugging it in, and hopping on a Zoom with a friend and say, how do I sound? And have them record a little bit of it, and then have them send you the video so you can hear how you sound, or you record it. Record it on your own computer. Yeah, hello. That's, that's how you would do it. You would record it on your own computer and then listen back and maybe buy a couple of them, test them both, record, listen back, and then pick the one you want. That's great. Thank you so much, Michelle. This is really fun. You're so event. welcome. So many great tips. And thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed this event and will participate and perhaps even bring a fellow booth alum to a future CBW event. But before you go, a few quick things. The conversation doesn't have to end here. So um, I'm going to put into the chat our, our social media group, if I am able to do that. We've got uh, Facebook as well as LinkedIn. So look for that. It's also in our newsletter. And I realized that that did not, let's see, that's that. Okay. So I will, I'll put that in the text in a minute there. Um, but our next event is our final event within our 2021 leadership series, Women Leading in a Time of COVID. It's next week. We'll hear from a fellow alum, Ruchira Chaudhary, as she chair, shares her methodologies and practices for um, an uncommon way to, to leadership. So look for that, uh, register if you're able to join, that would be we'd love to have you. And then after that, our next series is Beyond Friendship. So they are going in the months of July and August. The first question everyone asks is whether or not they can be in person. As of right now, nothing in person through the end of June, but we will wait to hear about July and August. So. Look for those if you're interested in hosting, whether it be virtual or in person, reach out to us through the link in the newsletter or the website. And then finally, we're always trying to improve events. You're gonna get a quick one minute survey at the end of this. And we would really, um, sometime at the end of this from alumni relations, 
just take the one minute if you can and just let us know what you think. We like to make sure that our, our membership likes what we're bringing to you. And if we don't, we want to adjust that. So please do look out for that. And then finally, let's get for our monthly newsletters. It's always got the latest news and upcoming events, volunteer opportunities, our alumni spotlights, and of course, ways to get in touch with us with various um, topics you'd like to see, whether or not you'd like to volunteer, or even just to know what's what's going on and join our Facebook and LinkedIn groups again. So thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you everyone else for coming. Thank you, Denise, for running our technology. Have a great day. Thank you, Nima. It's okay to, I'm just going to copy the chat. It's okay to log off whenever. I will automatically end this in a minute as soon as I make sure that I save the chat with everybody's emails. So, Thank you, yeah. ladies. Thank Bye. You. Bye.